right, everybody. This is a uh, training without conflict podcast, and today I have with me Matthias Dogel from Germany. And for those of you that the name sounds familiar, there could be quite a few reasons. One would be the the latest uh, sit uh, competition that happened in March, and of course, WorkingDog.com. Uh, Matthias, welcome. And um, um, maybe just kind of briefly introduce, uh, give, tell me a little bit about yourself, like uh, how, how did it all started for you in, in the dog world? Yeah, th thanks a lot. And um, I'm happy to be here and uh, have this nice conversation with you. So um, I started very early, it was uh, when I was about uh, 14 years old. Um, it was uh, my dream to, to have a German Shepherd <laughs> this time. And uh, first, uh, I have the German Shepherd for my neighbors. Um, and uh, with, with, with him or with her, I, I go to, um, to some people to make a little bit training on the open field. Mm -hmm. And um, one year later, um, my, my parents uh, see that I was going to spend a lot of time to the dog and take care of him. So uh, they agreed uh, that I have uh, can have my, my own one. And um, then I started, um, go to the local club in our town. And um, at the beginning, um, it, it was not so interesting for me. Uh, until the moment uh, I make uh, first time uh, protection. So uh, there was a, a guy who um, teached me a lot and uh, he said, okay, take, take the sleeve and uh, make a little bit protection with my old dog. And from this moment on, um, the fire was <laughs> started. You, you, got the, you got the injection. Yes. <laughs> very exactly. cool, very cool. Now you do you do uh, you do breed Malinois, right? I mean, you have yes. a, you you have. Yes, it it, it was. Uh, I started with German Shepherd, and um, after this uh, this first one, um, he was not uh, so good for for IGP. Um, I, I buy um, a second one. And uh, the second one has uh, big problems in um, HD and HD. Yeah. So back, and uh, then I was uh, so frustrated. Um, I was about 2021 in, in, at this time uh, that I decided, um, okay, my, my third dog will not be a German Shepherd anymore, and uh, this was the reason. Um, to look about uh, the Malinois, and uh, I have no idea about this breed this time, but um, a good friend, he has uh, one Malinois this time, and uh, I, I met with him in, in a bar in the evening, and we drink some beer, and um, I printed out the, uh, the actual breeds of the, of the club, and I said, okay, look, um, what, is the, what is the best litter? I, I want to I wanna buy... Um, a male and uh, he tell me mm, okay I, I know this too so I called uh, first um, Volker Riedel uh -huh. um, the breeder of uh, De Teutones yeah. and uh, I said um, yeah I, I want to have um, a male puppy from uh, your litter and uh, he only make ha 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 you are number blah 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 <laughs> And he was course, at one uh, point he was very much in in you know everybody was asking for puppies from him at one time for sure exactly it, it, it was around the year 99 2000 and uh, at this time it uh, it, it explodes uh, in in germany everybody won by uh, malinois and of course uh, nobody um heard about the name matthias dögel yes and so <laughs> Volker, he don't care. He said, uh, maybe, maybe I have a female for you. And um, I answered, um, no, I only want a male. And this was the reason why I said um, no to Volker. And uh, then um, I come to my to my kennel 
äh, von der Krähenschmiede. It's um, uh, he don't breed anymore, but uh, this time it was his sea litter. And um, I remember very well. Uh, I drive there uh, to to watch the puppies, and before we go to the kennel, we uh, going to the um, to the club. Um, making some training, um, and then I see there all this Malinois dogs uh, from from this kennel and from Airport Hannover. Mm -hmm. And um, after uh, this years with German Shepherd, my my first idea was, oh my God, what for ugly dogs. <laughs> Uh, I love it. That's everybody's reaction, isn't it? So my, my, my belly, my belly was like I having a big stone and I was thinking, oh shit. What uh, am I doing? What, what am I doing? <laughs> exactly, exactly. <laughs> Then they make protection and uh, I started to, to, to like it. <laughs> Yeah, and it was exactly like this. It was exactly like this. I think yeah. a lot of people did that when that, that very, very similar route. Me included. I always, always try to do it with the German Shepherd. Um, I started also with them and one had the bad hips, one had the bad back, mm. one had a really bad skin problems, like really bad. But as working qualities, they were amazing, absolutely amazing dogs. But when you go by three dogs and you spend, let's say, year and a half to two years of each, that's six years of, of playing, gambling and not knowing. And but that was a long time ago. Now I think it's I don't know. Do you think I, I think there is better chances, especially when you know when to look There's still a risk with the German Shepherds, but there is a better chance to to get a healthy one today, I think, better than before, or I don't know, what do you think? Yeah, I, I, I agree. So um, I, I think um, in, the, in the late 90s and um, until 2005-2010, um, you have the much bigger chance to get a, a good Malinois for, for uh, the IGP sport than a German Shepherd. Um, but I, I think in, in, in the last 10 years, it changed a little bit. So um, a, a lot of German Shepherd breeders um, see, okay, we must take care uh, for sure. First about health, second about drive and uh, third also about nurse. And yeah, and, and today, today, Mm, I don't know how it is in, in the States, but um, here in, in, in Europe, um, I think you have at the moment the bigger chance to get a good German Shepherd than a Malinois. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I know what you mean. Especially, at least in my opinion, the, the temperament of the Malinois starts to, it, it's changing to more... Uh, I, I don't want to say weaker type of dogs, but kind of, I don't even know what word to use, but it's more of a temperament problem than the health problem, right? You know, uh, what, what was, a, what was um, the reason why the Malinois was so successful um, in, the, in the late 90s and early 2000? Um, I, I think, um, of course, um, healthy, And um, second, a good drive, good temperament, and um, yeah, also good, a good, good nerves for 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 the sports, and right. um, more stable, more stable, more stable, exactly. And I think that the, the, the biggest problem for the breeder is um, to to see the difference between drive and nerves and um you know how it is uh if you wanna if you wanna be um a training champion of course this is not so important but if you wanna be successful on competition 
uh, you need a stable dog, of yes. course. You know how it works. You're driving thousand kilometer to to the championship. Your dog um, is under much stress because a uh, new environment, training all the time. Um, you go into the stadium, a lot of people, um, new helper. Um, of course, you need you need a dog who who can uh, handle this. Yeah, 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 and it's a. Uh... And, and because it's not stable, it's not like there is a one training problem that you say, I, I can fix this. It can pop up in any, in any place during the competition, uh, just, just because of, of, you know, the temperament and the character. It's, uh, it, it's very true. And hopefully, I mean, we're paying attention. I think we, we it became popular, very popular, breed um so we we almost kind of maybe and maybe not but almost need to go through that kind of roller coaster that the german shepherd dog went to and i think we're in this peak that everybody wants a malinois because if you don't have a malinois you're not a good trainer or or something like this you know and that's uh that's a disadvantage for the we we want people to train we want to do the sports but yeah with with the the breeding selection is very interesting how how it's going tell me with the i i really wanna i mean we're gonna go all over the place but i i definitely want to hear how how working dog how the the whole idea how did that came to you because it's so brilliant and i know at that time, I don't know if in Europe people knew, but we had this, and it still exists, the pedigree database and like few different things at the time when the internet first started to come in and and those were the places to go. But then you, you took it to a totally different level. So I, I really very curious to hear how, how this all happened, because I'm sure there was a lot of roadblocks and it wasn't just a smooth try to get where you did. Yeah, it started um, 2003 and it was uh, at the beginning only uh, the idea about um, a small database for um, Belgian Shepherds mm. and this uh, with, with pedigrees and results. So the, the idea to, to um, combine um, the result lists um, from the competitions with um, the pedigree and a picture of the dog and some information like, um, yeah, name, uh, right, right, say, yeah, everything like this. This this was the start. And um, how many an, people? How was kind of like just a couple of people that you had going with it, or was it just you doing it? How how did it um, at the beginning it was. Um, uh, a, a friend, um, he helped me a little bit uh, with uh, the development. It was a small coding. So um, I remember for the first version, I, I give him 300 euro for his support. Yes, <laughs> yes. So it's it's nothing, but um, okay, it was a small version. Huh? And um, of course, um, I, I, I learned programming development, web pre uh, development um, when I was young. But uh, then with 21, 22, I, I, I stopped it. So I'm, I know what happened, of course, uh, but, but I'm not a developer. Yeah. And um, in, in this time, um, this guy helped me and we, we bring up this working dog website to live. At the beginning only with Malinois, this results and everything like this. And um, after, I think, mm, six months, um, I learned, uh, I met the first people who said, oh, we like this idea. Mm -hmm. we, we collected a lot of data in our Excel files. And uh, then they started to, to help me. And yes, this was the beginning without any community, without any videos, without all these functionalities um, you see today. Yeah. 
And um, in 2005, um, I exit, uh, make exit to my job. Um, I was um, something like an account manager for, for um, digitalization in the company here in, in Leipzig. And I decided um, I, I want to be my own boss uh, since I'm a child. Um, and I decided to, to yeah, to found my, my own enterprise, so my, my own um, startup. And um, it was at home uh, in my working room. And after six months, um, I started with selling software and make customization for this um, on small, medium companies. Mm -hmm. And after six months, um, it grows. I was successful with it. And I go to, uh, I rent an office and I hire the first uh, employee. And um, yeah, so with, with this business, I, I grow until 2007. And um, working dog was growing also. But um, the program was exactly the same like uh, 2003. I make some bug fixes here and some small uh, functionalities there, but, but nothing big. But my problem was that um, 2007, I, I must spend something like uh, three or 4,000 euro every month for the server mm -hmm. and for the hosting. And um, I, I paid this only um, with my income from uh, my software company. So, and um, then I was at the point where I say, okay, I, I spent every month uh, something like three, four, five thousand euro. And with advertisement, I only um, get about 800 or 900 euro. It, it was yes. this different. Yes, yes. Yeah. And, um, then comes the point where I was thinking, oh, shit, um, it's a hobby, but now it starts to be really an expensive hobby. <laughs> and uh, then, then there was a funny situation because uh, one of my, my first um, sponsors of or advertisement partners yeah, uh, was yeah. a food company here in Germany um, called Belcando. Um and um, I, I met this marketing guy uh, one day and uh, he said uh, to me, um, hey, come on, it's a good idea. And I see it's uh, too much for you. So we give you some money and we take care about it with you in the future and uh, bring it, uh, make it big. And so said, but they hey, want it to be like like partners in a way or yeah, yeah. they, they huh? want to want to be partner or may uh, it was more that uh, they want to buy it okay okay they, they want to buy it and um but for sure they they need me to um help them bring making it uh, bigger and um i said okay mm, okay why not so what we're talking about and um he said to me, 80,000 euro. And I was in shock because at this time, so much money yes. for me for yes. just the website. <laughs> yes. And well, I they were smart really... people. I think they, they saw, yes. they saw yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, and for me in this situation, it, it, it was so much money. Uh, and I was really thinking about it, but at the end, um, people people who know me know um, money is not uh, in my list on number one for right. sure not. So it's it's more about um, I want to make things big. I want to see them grow. I want to develop things. Uh, this no, is, you're uh, like the I mean uh, like the businessman part. I don't know if it all happened through as you were going with working dog, but you're really good at it. I mean, yeah, this is this is what I like. And um, so I said no to him. And um, after after this conversation, 
um, I, I decided um, to hire a, a developer. Um, this was my first developer in my company. And uh, then we start to make Working Dog professional. Yeah. And um, we spent about one year of work. And at the end, um, we bring up the new version. And then in 2008, I think it was, um, we released uh, the premium account. When did the so, video start? I think it was around the same time, no? Yes, exactly. Um, the video because that was a game changer. A lot, a lot of people won't kill me at this time because uh, they said, um, "Why, why you take money in our hobby? Why you take money in the internet? Everything in the internet is for free for sure." And uh, now you you are going and uh, take money for data. This is not okay. And uh, yes, it, it, it was really um, a difficult situation, but at the end, um, it was necessary. Of course. Yes, for sure. That's more of a, that's kind of typical of uh, uh, how people in Europe would think that way. Like in the States, it's a, yeah, if, if you have passion and you're putting your time and you're charging for your effort, everybody seems to be uh, understanding it different than how people in Europe are about it. Yeah, exactly. Um, in, in 2008, um, people in, in, in Europe um, don't understand why to pay uh, a monthly a monthly fee um, for, for, for data. So, and um, in the States at, at this time, um, LinkedIn started and uh, Facebook and um, all this company grow and um, yeah this this was this was completely a new way to make um, business in the internet because before everybody know it's only about advertisement yeah very much similar to uh, um, like the online schools and stuff that's how i started you know the same the same way and i remember actually at one point uh, we did some link exchanges and stuff when when you still had to you know promote it and everything that was a yeah a long time ago now it's not even only igp obviously we are covering all working dog sports but what else is there because i like on my end what I spend most of my time, of course, is IGP and all the ring sports and, and stuff like that. But I, I know that there is a lot more going on. Uh, what, what else do you have? So we, we have all the uh, sports you, you find out there on our website. And um, the, the, the most biggest community for sure is uh, agility. Wow. And Yeah, um, not surprising, right? It's at, at the moment. It's it's one of the the biggest uh, the biggest parts in in, in sport, and um, yeah, you you know I'm I'm a IGP man too since I'm a child and I, I know both sports very well. And um, I always asking myself um, what's what's the difference? Why is one one sport so successful and the other sport has um, a, really a hard time to grow or to, yeah. to exist and for sure you have um the, the the situation in the world changed and um a lot of people ask today why must a dog bite a human being yeah. <laughs> yeah. like this? this is exactly in this stupid way they ask it and um yes agility you you um earn success much more faster um i don't i don't mean um you are faster in in the world success or on the big competitions for sure it's the same hard way yeah. like in IP. Yeah. and people competing in this sport and on the on the top places are high professional uh, exactly like we uh, did oh in, yeah it's, did. A, it's a way of life at this point there is nothing yeah exactly exactly yeah. It's, it's totally similar, but 
you know how it is um, to do IGP sport. Uh, you need the right dog. So it's it's not possible with a Labrador in this way. It's not possible with a golden red river. But you can you can have a little a bit of success in agility with this kind of breeds. And um, yes, the IGP sport is also very complex. Uh, you, you don't have only one exercise. You have three. And to, to build on that more, agility is, there is still judges discretion, but it's way more uh, unbiased, much more fair, the competition than it, like the, the way a judge in IGP can influence a certain competition by their own interpretation is so uh, uh, dramatically different than how, how much agility judge can change things and dictate, right? It's a, it's a little bit, uh, and I think, um, yeah, it's part of our sport, the IGP sport, that it, it's a difficult to, to, for everybody to one day become more on the same page, no matter how much judges, um, you know, camps and how much trying to come to the same vision, ultimately it's still left to that judge on that day on the field too. And it's hard because you're a human being and you have hundred dogs to judge and all of a sudden your brain just kind of goes somewhere. Not necessarily that you're purposefully screwing up some competitor, it's just human yeah. nature. And um, so that's a big, big, big advantage of agility. And again, I know, I mean, I've done some in, in the early 90s myself, and I, I know there is still room for the judge, but it's very different compared to IGP. Our sport is almost like the, you know, how, how any priest can interpret the Bible, what actually says when it says something else. And it's kind of like how IGP judges can play with the rules. Another one, it's a, yeah, this is a very true, the, all, all breeds are welcome and you still need a team, but you're not like if you, if you want to go and do IGP and have success, you need, you need a good helper. You cannot not have a good helper. And that means at least in the States. And now I think it's becoming more and more normal in Europe. People used to think, oh, I'm not driving hour and a half because it's right next to the, my next street is the dog club. But I think now people in Europe also understand the importance of a good team and good helper and, and the support and the coaching. And they're much more willing now to spend the time and to travel to, to accomplish it. You, you can do a lot on your own. For sure, uh, in IGP, you can, uh, you can also do it. But uh, at the end, IGP has has um, a kind of complexity. It's it's in, in in the situation that you have different drives working uh, together makes it so complex. So when 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 I see the good people from from um, the obedience. Of course, they make only obedience. Yep. The, the situation in our sport is, you, you know it, when you start with the dog in the protection, it changes something in the dog. And, and you must take care um, to um, explain the, the dog that um, he don't switch in the drives. This is this makes it very very hard, and I uh, I need a lot of years to understand this. And I see in the IGP sport um, from year to year 
you get more experience, you know more solutions for some problem, and you see a lot of good older dog hand handlers, and uh, they make great sport because they have a lot of experience. Yeah, that's and, true. And on the other side, um, so I, I make I make dog sport now since 25 years, something about this. And um, I'm still learning. I'm still learning. And I'm, I'm really, I'm really um, laughing always when, when I see um, in our sport um, the one hit wonders, some yes. people who win a competition with the first dog, first time they are successful. And then after this competition, you see them making seminars. Yes. And this is for me such a funny situation because um, they have one dog and um, with one training um, method and maybe a good trainer behind. And with, with this situation, they were successful. And when they go to a seminar, there are 10 different dogs with 10 different problems and 10 different things to handle. And they have no idea how to do it. Yeah, this is a, yeah, that's, that's IGP for sure. Yes. And, and somehow I think it's because the need, I don't know why, like I don't actually, I, I also wonder about this quite a bit sometimes. What makes people just jump on that train? It's like, oh, I'm gonna go to this seminar because this person, and it's not that hard to see especially talking about working dog i mean just go on working dog put the name of the person and and vroom, everything shows up do you mm. want to learn from this person or do you want to learn from this person uh, like i i think if we go to a doctor or something else we we humans make a little bit smarter choices and when it comes to dog training i think um most i and i don't it's one thing when you don't understand the sport but because you don't understand the sport it's still not an excuse to just kind of say okay i'm gonna follow this person because he's really good without really checking if he is really or she is really good it's a it's a something with our sport that it happens a lot they have um um yeah, the one hit wonders is a good good way. And and another big problem is the what we call it in 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 the States, seminar hoppers. You know, kind of like you have the people that hop at the bars Saturday night. You you have a whole community of dog trainers that they just no matter who is in town, let's go. Mm -hmm. And and let's change everything until the next seminar comes and let's change everything again. And five years later, now you're getting your second dog and you're not learning, you're still doing exactly the same pattern that didn't bring you any success and it's so illogical to me. And especially really like when you have the data, it's, it's the one thing if we cannot check accomplishments, credentials, and then, okay, yeah, that's what you have, but but when that's possible, yeah, it's an interesting, interesting uh, a way of thinking. But the sport is definitely not easy sport. It's not for everybody. And I don't know, like the, uh, we will get to this. I, I want to talk about FCI and DMC and all, just, just like all those governing organizations trying to make IGP sport for everybody. It's not easy, and I and I think no matter how we we you know certain people keep changing the rules and keep making it more a uh, supposedly more uh, trainer friendly and more for everybody. I think um, even in the nineties, it was still friendly sport. You just cannot, you know, you you still could go as far as you could go. And then there is a different level that not everybody 
can get to, which is, I think it's totally okay. Just like when we look at a, a dog that competes, some dogs will get good scores and some will get very good scores and very few get excellent. It's not like we all want excellent, but it's not meant to be for this. Yes. And I think it's the same with the training, no? Like you, everybody is not capable to be an excellent trainer. And it's not that it's a bad thing or a good thing. It's just, but I think it hurts the sport of, of um, washing it down and, and, you know, changing the rules with the intention to make it more popular. What, what do you think about this? The, the sport must develop. Um, and if you don't develop, um, you are not ready for, for the future and you are not ready for the next step and you will not get new people into the sport. At the end, um, I think everybody must understand um, that our sport is, is very special in the way that is difficult. Because you, you have to learn these three things, uh, tracking, obedience and protection. Yeah. And um, it's like it's these are three sports in one. Yes. And, and almost it's, three different dogs, three different yes. styles of training. Exactly. Exactly. It's so hard to, to combine these three exercises in three excellent exercises. This is the biggest problem. You know, you, you, you see it on, uh, at the Satsit competition. There was um, a female making 98 point in obedience. It was so wonderful. Yeah. I, I really, really like it. But then in the long attack in protection, she runs away. And of course, then you have a German Shepherd. You can't even look at him in the obedience. He was walking like a sheep. Yep. Yep. <laughs> but in protection, bah, it was brutal. It was strong. It was dominant. And this is, um, this is, I think, also one one uh, reason why this Satsit competition was successful, because this these dogs you never see on the world championship. Right. They they will not reach this goal because when they start with their first exam, make qualification to maybe uh, the nationals, and uh, try to get from the nationals to the world championship with this dog, you will never have success. And so nobody, nobody can see this. And this is what, what we did at the uh, Tzatzit competition. We, we give these people um, something like, like a platform to show. And um, this makes it very, very special. And, and was, there, was there a qualification or, or how did that? No, right? It was no qualification. You need an IGP-2. Yeah, and uh, then you go there and make your IGP three, yeah. and uh, uh, this is this is I think the reason why it was um, so successful because um, the 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 normal the normal one can start there on a very high competition level with the high professional and. Um, Everything there, everything there was like one of the best organized world championships. We have uh, the best people in trekking, making nice tracks, um, perfect organization there with draw, with with high qualified judge. We make it uh, in the stadium. It, it was um, everything perfect, like a big, big, big competition. And this people who was never on a world championship um, or something like this say, wow, yes. what is yes. this here? Everything is, is <laughs> so nice organized. And, and on top of that, you were able to draw some of the best of the best from quite a few countries. 
it wasn't yes. it wasn't just and i mean you we you know uh, everybody that pay attention knows that i mean so um can you for uh, at least for americans because a lot of us here it's not fci so uh t- tell tell my listeners what sasit really is um so first uh, sasit is is a title by the fci and um it's it's a working working champion title so it means if you go to to a competition what is um saved by the fci for the satsit title you can um get uh, this satsit card for first or second place of for, for the best from your breed and if you collect two of the satsit titles and your dog has uh, a minimum a very good in an international show yeah. of exterior then you send this to uh, your your club to your fci club and uh, you can get um, the the title international working champion and in the moment in, in the world it's 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 not so well known the most people don't know it in czech republic this satsit competition exists since years and it's it's very very popular a lot of successful uh, dog handlers uh, competed there and uh, one year later they are getting world champion at the fci or fmbb um so it's a very famous competition there in Czech. I was there first time last year. That's what and, made um, you do that, right? Yes. Um, I, I would make the first place there. And for me, it, it was, yeah, it was really a, a wonderful, a wonderful competition. And I was thinking, okay, I, I must bring it to Germany and yeah. After this, I decided, um, and it was successful. We 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 had the idea about the Golden League. Yes, tell me about this one because that's a very that that. Uh, I mean, it's already a very good uh, uh, progression of where it's going. So um, at the moment, you have uh, three Satsit competitions in the Golden League. Uh, first, of course, it's uh, the Tzatzit in Czech Republic, in Dobrich, um, Brauns Petra in Germany, and uh, Poland. Mm-hmm. Um, it's uh, this Madbox competition, uh, what the name in the, in the last years. And um, these three competitions belong to the Golden League, and there is a pointing system behind, and for the first 10 places, you got points. It's a little bit like in the Formula One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And at the end, you collect your points. And when the year is over, this guy or this girl with the most points win the Golden League. Brilliant. And okay, this is this is the first year we started it right now. Um, of course, it's not everything finished right now so it's it's just in the beginning but i think it could have a, a, a big future a oh really i agree big. i agree 100 percent. i mean it's already created so much interest you because it's it is within fci regulation so you are playing the igp by the fci uh rule book correct yes it's correct absolutely the reason I'm thinking is I, I just somehow hope that we, like the, the, the sport community can eventually do something about it and stop the, some of the changes that are put on us mm-hmm. without, without ever even consulting the people that actually play in the sport. It's just all of a sudden some two people decide that, okay, well, we will change the rules and from tomorrow, this is what we do. And 
I I think that you know people that are spending so much time years in the sport we should have some kind of allow for some kind of input and not always be dictated because some of the some of the rule changes are really just to me at least don't make much sense um what do you think with that it's a it's a big thing here in in, in europe um, and especially in, in germany um in the in the in the in the the normal people, the normal people, are um, influenced by more and more by people that don't have the idea about the sport, don't speak the truth about training a dog, and it's it's something like our the, the human being getting more and more um, away from the reality. In, in this part, because of course it's it's nice to hear um, famous people in television or in social media um, speaking about um, that you can everything do in a positive way with with the animal. Yes, and um, the way we it, say it in the states is everything is rainbows and unicorns, <laughs> and. Um, they believe it. They really believe it, and it's it's the the idea. I, the idea himself is so nice. So it's it's not about that um, you or me are interesting uh, to make to make pain on our dogs. For sure not. We are interested to make clear situation, black and white. Everything what's necessary to. Uh, that the dog the dog learns very fast what are the rules yeah and um of course um it's an animal and um, i i i feel sometimes like here in germany the the um this this famous people uh want that every dog uh must wear a harness and every dog can't sleep in the kennel he must sleep in your bed and uh it makes me uh, very 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 sad when i hear this and it's um, frustrating because because it has gone so far yeah. that it's almost and i hope i'm wrong but it's almost impossible to try to bring some sense back to 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 everybody there is a whole new generation of of people that do some dog training that are very confused right now in Europe because of that. Yeah, and um, we must understand why it is like this. And of course, it's because um, this sells very good, and it's 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 a business thing. So these people or the one guy here in Germany, for example, who make uh, a lot of stress against uh, the Schutzhund community, um, he earns his money that people come into his schools and pay for every hour of training what you take in the club for the whole year. That's the difference. Yes. And um, um, I'm a businessman and I understand how it works. And of course, for him, it makes totally sense to, to explain to the people, don't go to this bad clubs of the German Shepherd or of whatever, of the DVG. Don't go there. People are bad to their dogs. They are, come to my dog training school and you will learn how to teach a dog in only the positive way. <laughs> <That's>, I know. <laughs> I it's know. the market of these people. It's it's hundred percent market, and and even with all the studies that they're done, and all the animal veterinary behaviorists, and all this, they have hijacked the dog training, and all of a sudden, they have announced themselves that they are the people that know what dog training is and how it should be done, and and. And most of them have not even trained dogs. They're just scientists. They don't know how to train dogs. 
it's it's not a you know like you can have a a, a very good doctor that doesn't mean that that doctor is a good parent with their kids it's just a very good doctor being a parent it's a, it's a different skill set and and it's the same with dog training but um somehow i don't know why i i i'm sure it's because it's in the states and people here are a little bit more not so willingly following what somebody on top says of the government or whatever they, we, we are a little more like why you know and in europe some like in the 2000s in the early 2000s when that whole movement starts to creep in everybody used to think that oh well they're just talking we're gonna still be able to do what we do and nobody stand up at the time which it could have been easier to to battle this you know what 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 you need for it you need a um, good connection you need a lobby and uh, you know you must know how um, to speak with the right people and um, I still know a time it's more than 10 years ago that um, the, the the dog community in Germany the breeding clubs or, or the VDH it's uh, it's an organization uh, under the FCI has um, has always a ear in the ministry and has always a ear in in, in the uh, in the government mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. um, this time is over uh, this people um, nobody cares of them and uh, in the government they don't listen to this people and why they don't listen because this people don't do their job in the last uh, 10 15 years yes. they they take um they take their time to to save um maybe their position their the position club. exactly that's exactly what it was and uh, there is there is no idea what to do for for making a lobby in the government for that what we do and this is the difference to this uh, to this people um from the other side they exactly do this and in today's age is it makes it so difficult because everybody is so quick to browse and scroll and swipe and you know you nobody uses their brain anymore so when you're presented with this very quick are you a good or a bad person are you using corrections or are you not and you have no time to even explain and then that whole momentum goes and i think this is where the politicians get all trapped because uh on the surface when it's presented so nice it hits that soft spot on everybody's heart of course i'm a good person and nobody takes the time to really understand what we are doing and why and and it's a very very difficult battle but i think uh in in the states we we learned from what was happening in in europe and somehow at least still for now we are much more organized when in some state in some city they say oh we're gonna ban this and we're gonna make this and and a lot of trainers will actually show up at the meetings and say no no we you you have no reason and no ground to to do this this is this is this is one of the of the main things what uh, brings me to to decide go out of this um organizations and and do something new completely on my own with my people and in in our way we are thinking with with sports people so wh when we do the the Zazit competition here the first time we we do so much different we go out and make completely the entry to the stadium for free. Everybody can come. Free entry. You don't Beautiful. have to pay. And I make so much advertisement here in the local towns. And I say, hey, we have their stores. 
come with your golden retriever or whatever you have. Uh, you can buy dog food, you can buy this, this, and this. And the people come and, and, and they enjoy it and they see the sports and we have the television and we have yes, the Yes, you the had the interviews, stadium. you had the news, the, the people, there, was, there were people yes. actually watching. It was, it was yes. beautiful. And Ivan, listen, what happened? It, it was so funny for me because uh, we also make the live stream completely free. You can, you can see it everywhere for free and listen. And then, um, you know, we have Bart. Uh, yes, making. of course. <laughs> that was super choice too. Yes, and, and but but after some days he said yes to me. He realized what that did mean for him, <laughs> and he called me <laughs> and said, "Oh, Matthias, <laughs> what what I did? <laughs> I must stand up one o'clock in the night and I must speak the whole day. <laughs> This is not normal." And I said. Uh, Yes, sure, but now I tell everybody that you will do it. Yes. Oh shit, he yes. says. And now and now so much people from my company come to me after this competition and said to me, Hey Matthias, I'm working since 10 years for you. Um, okay, I'm I'm a software developer. I, I don't understand anything about the sport, but I watched the live stream and now because because of this guy um who speak all the time yes i understand what's important for you <laughs> no no bart was a, a excellent choice for this i think uh, i mean i don't know even how how that idea came to you but i'm assuming from back in time with dances with malinoa when he was yes you know i mean he did such an awesome job with this no this is i mean very very smart way to approach it to to get people curious about what we do and and give them just enough understanding to where they can be involved in it it's like oh okay let me watch now the next dog and let me see if i'm getting it and you little by little you're making them interested in what we do i was super yes. cool idea this is this is exactly Uh, what brings us in the last 20 years in this situation. And um, look, when, when I started in dog sport, it was like, okay, I have a German Shepherd now and the German Shepherd uh, need to be trained. So I go to the local club. I take my bicycle and drive to the local club. And yeah. there the people... That was me in Belgium, me. the same way. <laughs> So and and this is this is how we started, yeah. and then what what happened today? If if people own the dog, they don't go to the club. They they go to the dog school. They pay one time a week for one hour, fifty or one hundred bucks, and then um, they make their training, and then they go go home, and, and that's it. Yeah. So and. The, the the clubs they closed yes there is I, no i did i did the same i did the same i'm training with the with the same 10 people since 15 years and every month somebody knocked at my door and said can i come for training and what i say no because i need my time My people need their time, so I have so many, so many good people going on big competitions in my small group. Yeah, we, we can't we can't take new people to our club. in In this situation, in this situation, I know that I am also responsible for this problem we have today. I know it. And we, we must find new ways. Wow, you just made me think. I mean, I feel now the same way because I, I basically we have other chance. I, I stopped even no having chance. I stopped even having a dog club. I don't know. At least it's been at least at least 15 years since I had like a club with with you know. You you are professional in what you do. And for me, it's the same. And you know, it, it don't work that every week we have the one new guy. Um, you must explain him the basics. Right. It, it, 
it's not working for 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 this level we want to compete with our dogs and um on the other on the other side it's okay but but i i felt that um i must do something um uh, to 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 find a new way getting new people into Excite our system. people yes and the the Tzatzit competition um have so many ideas about this thinking and one idea was give the live stream out have somebody like bart explaining what this guy is doing there on the green that somebody who never who never see it who never understand it why he's getting for this beautiful exercise only a good it yeah. was perfect yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know it no no it, uh, again that that was that was brilliant and 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 i know it's not stopping there which makes it even more exciting that was something we talked when i you said that you uh, listened to my podcast with yani and um, i think we talked about this we we have to have a commentator we have to have people that explain and educate and it's like hey this is what you're watching just like with any other sport you have a that's how you get people hooked into that's how it, it's a very normal and it's not that you have to trick people you just make them understand a little bit more about a sport and then some people will be ah that's not for me but then some people will oh hold on this is interesting already how about i know now the um i don't even maybe we have to back up a little bit but but i know you and Helmut Reiser made a now now there is a Malinois club in the RSV 2000 which is very cool as well um tell me a little more how how that happened and how um so um you know i'm i'm a DMC member since 20 years um and um i, I I was so many years active there and uh we had a great time but at at one moment my idea about how to to handle the people um how to to make the sport how to judge and how to uh, make selection in, in breeding um my idea about it was different to mm -hmm a lot of other people there in this club and um yeah at the end um, there was uh, Split. two parts yeah splitted yes which is okay you know sometimes that's just what needs to happen it's a normal progression absolutely absolutely and of course um there there was the fight um about um, how to go on and we we try to uh bring our ideas um there and the, the other side um uh, try to to save the old ideas mm -hmm. and um in in these times where where this big stress starts um Helmut called me and uh, said hey Matthias uh, why do you spend your energy into this fight yes because I, i love my club i love my breed i want to make things better yeah but then come uh, to us uh, there you have uh, free hands and um, you can breed uh, the malinois uh, in our club and my answer was how many bottles of wine you drink this evening <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but <laughs> Helmut I mean he he's already been through that same process he knows exactly where you were he's been yes. through this struggle so much exactly and for me this this idea was it was so crazy um to bring this together as that I said uh Helmut uh yeah I think about it but be honest at the beginning um for me it was like uh, a joke yeah yeah so yeah. but but then but then I, i i was thinking more and more about it and we have a first meeting um it's oh, 
much more than one year ago. And um, with with the board, with the members of the board from the R3, and um, everybody there was like, um, what he want here? Huh? But uh, some people were open, and Helmut said, um, yeah, we, we must stay together. We have only uh, this one sport. It's important. Um, we are in, in the same in the same boat. Um, everything like this. It was a, a really good discussion. And at the end, I, I, I said to them, okay, hey, people, I think it could work because you, I like your ideas about uh, breeding a working dog, about making sport, and um, what. Uh, and I like your idea what's necessary to keep on running. Mm -hmm. But I, I tell you first, I, I want to save my club. And if this don't work, we can do it. So I, I was absolutely clear about this from the beginning. And at the end... Um, It, it don't work uh, in my old club in the DMC. And so I decided um, I, I must uh, leave this house. I must uh, build a new house for me where I can live and uh, where I have the space, what is necessary for me to expand and grow and bring new ideas to the world. Yes, and I found this in, in this club. So I'm really happy about this and um, I'm sure if um, the, the situation in the DMC will be uh, positive for our fight and, and we win the fight, then um, it will not be the same like today because uh, you, you still, maybe you, you win the fight, but you still have the old infrastructure. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And and sometimes and sometimes when you when you do something completely new, you must start from zero. You have to shut one door to open the next one. Yes, yes, That's it's really... disruption. And um, I, I compare it a little bit um, with with a big magazine newspaper companies. Um, I have a lot of business with with these companies um, 15 years ago, and um, the companies who understand that paper is um, dying and will not exist in the same way like in the last 40 years yeah. or 50 years, they are still uh, here. They are still here, yeah. exactly. So I'm I'm a little bit uh, happy about the situation, <laughs> how it works. Of course, it was real a real hard time, uh, not only for me, also for the people uh, going with me. But uh, at the end, um, it was the right. Yeah. The right. Yeah, yeah. Is the I have an I I'm sure I have talked about this with Helmut, but I I don't like. RSV 2000, they they don't necessarily follow the FCI rule book, right? Um, there are two ways in the RSV 2000. Uh, you have you have the competition um, with uh, the Schutzhund. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's outside the FCI rule book, and you have the competition um, following the FCI. Oh yes, rulebook. because there is also they they can. Uh, uh, send a team to FCI. Yes, yes. And of course, uh, the Zazit competition is under the FCI rulebook, so it means uh, no hit with a stick and all this. Yeah, yeah. but the RSV2000 Schutzhund, do they still use the stick or no? Yes, they, they do. still use it. Good, very yes. good. Very good. Yes. Because um, a lot of people don't know it, um, The, the stick hit is not forbidden in Germany, and it wasn't um, it wasn't pushed by any activists or anything. No, it was it was not. It was only the point that uh, when they changed uh, uh, some things in in the in the law um, one year ago, um, there was something like you don't have to make pain on the dog. That's all, and. 
uh, the stick don't make pain on the dog. But of course, uh, the thinking was um, we don't want to go into discussion about it. So we take it away before uh, it goes official. This was a thinking. So um, for me, I'm, yeah, I, I know, I know how important in, in, in so much situation the stick hit is for, for the working dog breed. And um, it's, it's a pity that, that we lose it. But I, I also understand the other side. I'm, I'm not 100% sure about it because at the end, for me, it's always this, this big idea about um, that we are going one step back after another. Always one step back. We take away this, we take away this, we take away yes. that. And they are little, they are very smart progression to where it's like, oh, we take a little something and it, okay, well, we're still okay. Then we take a little something, uh, we're still okay. And then you realize 10 years later, the, the game is not the same anymore. Yeah, and the first people uh, discuss about the long attack. Right, right. Point, huh? They say, ah, oh, look, it's so fast, it's so dangerous, so much could happen. But I, I, I tell you, I tell you, I have this working dog over 300 competitions a year, over 300 competitions we're making movies. And there are much more, much more accidents in agility. Yes than in IGP dog sports, much more. And this is this is the situation. Yeah, very excellent point. Yeah, agility is not an easy sport on the dog, yeah. that's for sure. You know, you oh, know, yeah. this is, oh, yeah. this is a lot for, for, for the dogs. It's really a lot. What do you think? Um, I mean, I know, I know everywhere in Europe, people are sport people are starting to wake up a little bit and starting to you know in in different ways and in different groups trying to bring back a little more sense and educate and and just like what you did with the sasit and i think i think it's very important that we 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 continue to to educate and and get young people in without sacrificing and washing down the the program that we play because if we if we i cannot imagine what kind of dogs we will have if we are not able to select and breed and again like people that know what they're selecting and breeding it doesn't matter how the rules change but anybody that is from a uh, generation after and generation after they're starting to see a different picture and they they are starting to losing what really the uh, a, a really good dog is about it's like a, you know like you have martial arts and you have I, I, it's very much the same i think with the dog sport protection dog sports you know like not every dog is supposed to do protection dog sports. It doesn't matter if it's a Malinois or German Shepherd, it's still not for everybody. But the ones that like it, the ones that are selected to like it, they don't just like it, they, they're like, I mean, they can be 15 years old and they can be on three legs and blind and they're like, please let me buy the sleeve. Please hit me with the stick. Let's play that game that I love, right? Mm -hmm. And that's going to change if we don't do anything about it. And also, I think what's going to change is training. I think when we have this, when, when we bring the dog a little bit more in a dominant mindset, a little bit more of like, hey, I'm, I'm standing my ground. It's a very different touch very different skill of training and it doesn't mean that we have to beat up dogs and kick them and do that it just uh we have grown up this was 30 years ago we are evolving we are becoming so much better in dog training but to compare training 
a dog that does dancing or, or fly ball or agility, yes, it's very, there are similarities, but it's a different mindset for IGP. And it's like, a, I think the, like, I, I really, really believe this. The training evolves because we learn how to manage and how to work with the dog when the dog is so pumped up and it's so whatever. And we are not squashing them. We're not making them be afraid. We're just working together. And that's gonna go away if we don't do anything about. I know we have now in, in next week, we have our old breed world uh, uh, national championship. It will be the very first one that I'm gonna watch without stick it. And the dogs that are in the competition, even though they don't get stick hits, they will get affected by the presentation because they have experienced it. So we can still kind of test them. If we start training dogs without stick hits from young puppies, they will learn that there is nothing, it's gonna, they will never get into that mindset of, of hey, I'm, I'm standing my ground, what are you gonna do? That's not gonna be, it, it, it will become, yeah, I mean, the, 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 the way agility dog thinks, it wouldn't be that much different than how uh, protection IGP will be for, for maybe another generation of dogs. It's, it's hard to say what, what kind of dogs uh, we will have in 10 years. But um, of course, um, we, we must protect this kind of dogs. Uh, we, we want stable in nerves with a lot of courage and uh, dominant and uh, brave and all this. So I'm, I'm thinking it's more and more about the breeder to to see the real dog and um, you know it's because of the good training in, in, in the last years um, it's more and more difficult um, to to see the real dog to separate them yep yes it's more and more difficult and of course um, the the dog uh, who wins the competition is uh, very often not the dog uh, who is good for the breeding. I think one of the one of the, the best dogs I, I ever breed. I finished with him after IGP one last year. I, I said, I don't want it. I don't want it. This this dog has too much from everything. And um, I make with him the IGP one, uh, and it was like <laughs> I started training, uh, preparing for the exam on on, on Sunday. Um, I go in in hardcore training on Friday with uh, tracking obedience protection. Then next day, um, Saturday, again two times tracking in the morning. Then at uh, uh, lunch he, he has a mating and in the afternoon um, I make two times obedience and in the evening two times protection and then he was ready that I pass the IGP one with him on Sunday and I, I love this dog but this dog is not for competition yes. it's not for competition and so I decided okay he, he will always be on my side uh, but for sure, I, I will not bring him um, to competition because it's... But uh, do you but, consider him for breeding? Because sometimes yeah. there is dogs that don't make competition, but they bring yeah. something to the genetics for the breeding, yes. right? He brings, he brings wonderful puppies. Yeah. That's, that's the point. To, to finish this this part with the Tzatzit yeah. competition, we... Uh, we won't make the three uh, Tzatzit competition stable. Um, it will be every time at the same place. 
every time with the same organization team. Mm. Um, this will make it, um, I think, um, from year to year, much more professional. Um, it's a, a little bit like uh, when you when you go um, for a racing, when you go to the Nürburgring, yes. ring, it's every time yes. the same. You know, it's Monte Carlo. Yes, exactly. And um, so this this is the decision of uh, the, the the members of the of the board from the Golden League. Um, so who are they? Tell me, tell me about how who who are the people in that right now? Um, there is Bogdan. He's from Poland. Um, he's uh, the owner of uh, Netbox. It's a, a trailer company mm -hmm. for for the trailers. And it's Jada. Uh, this is a guy who's uh, the founder of the Zatzit in Dobrich. And uh, he's also the guy who um, has an idea about um, the Golden League. It was it was his dream uh, over years and. Um, Now, after um, I started with him and uh, Bogdan um, decided uh, to go with him, um, he said, okay, now it's the point we, we, we start with the, with the Golden League. And the idea for the future is that um, there are more Tzatzit competition and um, we thinking about um, a place like Netherlands because then you you yes. have something in the West for for the Belgium for yes. the, for the Holland uh, and for the Danish uh, people yeah there is a big dog and, community in there for sure yes and um, we also thinking about uh, something like um, in, in the north of uh, Italy um, that you have uh, the Spanish people, People from Austria, people from Switzerland, and uh, on the on the right side in the east, Slovenia, yeah, Slovenia, yeah, yeah, Slovenia, and all this. Yes, and um, but one step after another. Um, I, I learned in my life uh, be, before you are going to grow, um, the the ground must be completely stable, and um, so this year. Um, we will do everything to make the ground stable. And then next year we will see. Um, I make one more day next year on the Tzatzit competition that we are able to handle. So is there gonna be another one this year or no? No, no. no. This year the three. And um, next year we are not sure. We must see, but at the moment um, we only want the three. And after this year is finished, then we um, we will decide and we will speak if the time is uh, right uh, is ready for maybe one more now how many malinois or belgian shepherd clubs are in germany now yeah we ha you have the dmc dkbs bsd Uh, the the Belgian Shepherd Club Berlin and now the oh. RSV so there are five five yes. so how do you work out qualification and and like going to FCI or FMBB or or, or are all clubs eligible to do or or some are not no um, in the last in the last uh, 30 years mm. there was one special thing only the DMC was allowed to make competition and exams. Um, all the other clubs are not allowed to do um, exams and IGP sport in, in this way. But did they want or they didn't really have interest to do? Yeah, uh, some people have interest and um, they, they use the club for breeding. And for sports, they go yeah. to maybe DVG or somebody else. Yeah, 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 yeah. And 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 now uh, the situation with the RSV is a game changer because uh, now you have you have um, the outlet. Yes, and uh, now it's the DMC who can make exams, and it's uh, RSV who can make exams for the Malinois. And um, the Zazit competition is also 
for the RSV members the qualification to the German Championship, VDH. And there you can, um, when you are under the first five, you go to the FCI World Championship. Okay. We have discussion with the members of uh, the board from, from the FCI Working Dog Commission. And uh, they said, um, we can think about when we have one more Tzatzit competition that the winner of the Golden League uh, gets a wild card to the FCI World Championship. So that it's makes... an interesting idea, but um, we must see. At, at the end, um, of course, the, the FCI title or the FMBB title or the WUSV title, this is what, what the people want to get. Of course, they have a big history. And um, with the Tzatzit and the Golden League, it's someone new on the field in the yeah. game. And I think the future will show um, which title is, is uh, most interesting. And of course, um, my room is uh, full of this metal things here. I, it's like you, we have tons of this. Um, I, I don't, I don't go to competition for this. I don't, Correct. I, I don't go to competition to bring this to my home because I have enough for this. Um, I go to competition because I, I want to have fun and I want to feel respect to my work, to my dog, to my people surrounding me. And this is important for me. And for, for this, for this, I, I don't want to go uh hundreds or thousands of kilometers to compete on a green field without nothing i don't want to go to compete um in front of a judge who is like uh bad 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 right to to the point that it doesn't it doesn't even make sense you cannot even like what where what are we doing yeah so Ivan, let's let's talk about this, this judging point because um, for us at the Tzatzit competition it was very important, very important, and I, I never had a competition before as an organizer where I have so much discussion and Zoom meetings with the judges of the upcoming competition and. Um, it was speaking about the philosophy, how to judge the dogs and how in, in, in what in what new idea the judges speak to the dog handlers. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. the, the main point is, so I'm, I'm a judge since um, 2015, something like this. And of course, I'm, I'm coming from a system what goes really deep in the details. And um, I like this because at the, at the beginning, it was like a big challenge. Who sees more mistakes? Who has the better eyes? Who can, who can um, identify all the, the little helps. And this was, was the challenge in, in the last years. But you see exactly this at the competitions where the judge only think about what, what is wrong and don't think about what is good. And we, we have a problem in our rule book. And the problem is that there is um, only the excellent, the very good, the good, and you know, uh, befriedigend. Yeah, sufficient, insufficient. Sufficient, yep. and insufficient. Yeah. And and the biggest problem is that insufficient and sufficient. There is one missing. In, in my in my thinking, when you go judging like this, 
Because if you have an exercise, it's very easy to, to bring this exercise in a, in a low, very good or in a good only because of some small things. But then you have the dog who is not well trained, the normal dog. And the exercise with this dog is not really nice. But he, he, he did it. He did the exercise. So, you know, the difference now between, between this dog and, and your well done exercise with hard judging is one point. Mm -hmm. And this is what we see every time on this big competition. 90% of the, of the people are between 80 and 89 points. And then you have only a few in the area 91, 92, and then finished. Nobody was excellent. And I think this is wrong. Yeah. This is this is not this is not the idea uh, about our sport. It, you know, like that there was. Um, I mean, still it's like that when you have in, in one way you're thinking. I'm thinking, okay, well, we have two judges or we have four judges on the field. It should be good, <laughs> right? Yes, and exactly. Now, and now what happens? <laughs> the judges <laughs> compete against each other, who sees more and who is, and and you just abuse the person and the dog that's showing because of the competition between the judges. And even, even with that, we know, we know every FMBB, you will have four judges and the supervisor give collectively a wrong score to the right mm -hmm. person in their mind. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a problem. It, it starts uh, at the philosophy of the judges. And um, the idea we, we had on, on the Tzatzit competition was about that we say, at this competition, we have people who are um, top sportsmen. They they competing all in world championship. They are a excellent trained dog. And on the other side, we have their people who who fight for the good. Right. And in in this area, you you must find a fair way. And if you see the the, um, the performance of Knut at the Zatzit competition of Knut Fuchs, yeah. the protection, it was great. It was a great protection. I really love it. And of course, why not to give high points for this? I tell you, I can go there and I can judge this protection to 95. It's possible for me. Mm -hmm. I find the right words. To for sure to make 95 points. And everybody in the stadium will say, aha, uh -huh, mm -hmm. oh yes, he's a professional. He see all the small details. But for what? It, it was, it was a, a great experience to see this performance. Yes. And for yes. sure, this one of the world best performance must be in the excellent. This is going back to the difference between judging agility and judging IGP. Somehow what needs to happen and probably will never happen, but it's just a dream of mine. And I'm sure it's not just me to, to be able to go in, or maybe it's not even supposed to be this way. Maybe it's really how the sport is to where we can go to a, a one competition with one judge and the judge is like, yeah, this is an excellent performance. And then the other one puts you on a, 89 category for very similar performance and and as a trainer especially if you are new at it you get really confused like it's like okay do i change my training now do i change the dog like where 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 am i standing i would, did, did, 
Ivan, did you remember when when the discussion and the rules uh, about the position of the hand in the basic position starts? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So it was it was like I was asking myself um, a good judge see when the dog handler use his hand to help the dog. A good judge see it. You don't need four judges on the field. One judge is enough, but he must see what happened. And he has and to have the courage to actually point it out, which is a problem too. And then, and then the first people started to say, okay, the hand must be on the, at the body. And for some people, it looks so strange because they are small, the dog is tall, and then he takes a hand behind and yes. make always this. And I was thinking, really, this is the reason why uh, people don't understand anymore our, our competition and our sport. Exactly, this is the reason. Keep it a little bit more natural, please. Yeah, yeah. We are not roboter. The dog is not a roboter. When we're talking about judges and, and, and judging, do you have any judges that you really appreciate how they judge? Um, as far as, I, I wouldn't say necessarily knowledge, but, but just being very sincere in ethical when they go on the field, they're not oh, well, this is the person that I train with, or this is the person, you know, I have some business with, but who, who comes to mind? There are a lot, a lot of judges in the world I, I really like. Uh, it will be a, lo a long list, and, and, and then maybe, maybe I forget somebody and I will be sad about this, so I, I, don't, I don't tell names. Um, But um, I think there are a lot of young judges, and when you when you see at the Tzatzit competition, all three judges um, are not well known as judges. Of course, they, they are well known as dog handlers. Very well known as dog handlers. Yeah, but not well known as judges, and this was one of the reasons for me to decide to take them. Mm -hmm. And I also have in mind for uh, the judges next year, who could it be? I don't speak with these people right now, but it's exactly the same. Um, people will say, oh, okay, he's a judge. I, I, don't, <laughs> I never heard about it. Yes. <laughs> you, you, you see in, in, the, in the way they speak with the dog handlers on the field, um, This was so practical. It was so full of respect because they know exactly. They can relate to it. It's like even even when you see a good dog and training and something happens and and you know it from your your heart. It's like man, it sucks for this person right now because I know, you know, and and that's the kind of people we want because judges are. Man, judges are so important for our sport. So important. Yeah. Because ultimately, yeah. it's not even the breeders. It's the, the judges that can guide everybody and educate and, and say where we are going. And when, when that is not there, it's very easy for everybody to get lost. Yes. And this, this emotions helps us To, to make our sport famous. Exactly these emotions. It's, it's a little bit, you, you, have, you have the chance in competition like this to write something like history. Uh, in, in the point that there are people, uh, like we got the, the girl we, we, we speak about, she with this beautiful um, obedience, um, 98, it, And then she come to protection and she fail. This is, this is like, this is like a story written down from, from, from a, a story writer or. Oh, yeah. Um, The roller coaster of IGP. 
Yes, and, and exactly, exactly the same with Knud and me. We 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 have um, the same group. So when we make uh, the draw, uh, he come to me and said, "Matthias, could it be <laughs> that we are together on the field?" And I said, "Oh no, please not." <laughs> <laughs> really, I, I, I was, I, I was really angry about the fact that I must compete with him in the same group, and he was laughing and was saying, "Oh yes, yeah, this will be interesting." Uh, and That's so it was on on the on a high level. He make a great performance. My dog make a great performance, and uh, it was uh, and the then, study and was quite. Yes, and you have the competition, and then you have the the friendship, the camaraderie, the respect for each other, and everybody sees it. And this is this is how we need to present the sport to the to the new people. That's exactly yeah. what we need to keep doing. Yeah, we 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 must we must think about what is what is necessary, and for me, make a good organization. Then you will have a nice atmosphere have good helper who are fair and absolutely clear to the dog, avoiding um, accidents, and then good judges with a very emotional speak to the handlers. And when, and when you bring this together, for sure it will be a nice competition. And people go home and say, Phew, I had a good time. I had a, such yes. a good time. Yes. And then and then after after this weekend every day every day I must answer on on messages in Facebook email and uh, uh WhatsApp people asking me what will be the date next year. Helpers from all over the world write me what I must do to be helper on this competition. And this this gives me so much because it was a proof that it is still possible. That's wow. the point. Yeah. It is yeah. still possible. And and I mean one of the good things is also for the people that listening that are not part of the FCI world, such as United States or, or other countries, they're still welcome to show. They are not isolated. Mm -hmm. And and that's that's also, you know, uh, uh, a big deal. Um, just about the, as you start to think, man, the sport is dying. Yeah. Maybe we start to realize, hey, we can we can do something about it. We just have to do something about it. We cannot sit back. Mm -hmm. And that's so, kind of what you're doing. Believe me, sometimes it, it, it's I can't hear it anymore because there is some some voice everywhere where people say the sport's dying we're getting less more and more and i tell those people yeah a lot of things getting more and more shit of course but in the world the sport is not dying and i have the proof because i have working doc and i see it in my database yes. there, there are so much young people in Czech Republic, for example, look at the competitions in Czech Republic on the podium. My God, uh, girls and boys under 30 years. And yeah, it's very also, inspiring, very inspiring. And it's uh, the sport, the sport uh, getting less people in, in, in countries like, like Germany. Yes, it is like this. But in other countries, it grows, and uh, we must understand that 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 the situation we're speaking about at the beginning of our interview. Um, you start in a club, you go there with a bicycle. I start in the local club. I go there with a bicycle three times a week. I think this is this is in this way it's finished, and we have today a new kind of. Sport. It's getting more and more international. And we must protect this community. We must do something that this community stay together, show the world that we are um, good people, that we are 
not stupid people making shit with their dogs. We take care about our dogs. Our dogs got the best, the best care. Uh, <laughs> what what you can expect? We spend so much money in them. We go to the best doctors. We go to the best physios. We do everything what is necessary, and we don't care about spending money in our animals. And it's and not just the money, but we also do the best we can every single day to get better. Yes. Like like better than today, better than yesterday. Okay, yeah, you can judge me today, but I'm trying to be better, and I will be better. You know, every all of us have that desire to to improve, and and when we talk about well, don't give me examples of what training used to be twenty years ago, thirty years, or forty years. Things have changed. Are there any shitty people that do stupid things to dogs? Of course. Are they gonna exist? I'm sure they will, but yeah. that's not the majority of of the people that are in the sport. We really, we are really educating and improving by the day, by the hour, and and it's amazing to to. Uh, but at the same time, very frustrating when I talk, especially with um, you know, I talk on my podcast. Sometimes I like to invite people that are all you know, wanting to ban electric color or whatever and, and try to get with their reasons why. And they always will give me this example. Well, I used to be one of these trainers 30 years ago. I'm like, well, 30 years ago, if you were to go in a dentist's office, it's gonna look very different than today. You know, like go today and see how they do or I mean, just because you have a bad experience with one trainer 30 years ago, it's so wrong to make this total uh, 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 conclusion of and put everybody in the same situation. It should be more interested in the people that actually do this excellent training. And it's like, oh, how do you do that? Instead of trying to pick on them and say, oh, but you're doing this and that that war somehow needs to stop between us and you you must the people must re recognize that our dogs um they have a genetic um genetically they have inside that they need to be in this, this kind of activity yes this this dogs are breeded for over 100 years Select for this kind of genetic. And you can't say from yesterday to today, we stop giving this kind of dogs breeded for protection, breeded uh, for, for tracking, breeded for all this work. We, we, we can't stop it from yesterday to today. It's not good for the animal it's not good for the healthiness of this of this uh, dogs so in in this in this position it's in in my opinion it's totally necessary to explain that this is the the best way to give to this kind of dogs a really good life yes in it's balance a, it's a purpose it's a meaningful life Imagine if you just walk on a flexi around your block of apartments every day and you eat this quality food. What kind of life is that for a dog like, or, or for a person? We all need to feel that we can accomplish. We, need, we like a little challenge. We like to overcome it. We feel somebody, you know? And, and this is... Uh, the whole force free community as as much as they don't like me saying this it's if you don't give the dogs any kind of outlet even if they are not selected for it if the dog likes to and and you know like they have to have a purpose if they don't have a purpose what happens we end up with dogs with all sorts of problems and then the animal shelters get full. 
and people get rid of their dogs and simply because we eliminate and we don't allow them to have an outlet. Like this is the difference with humans. Like if we think of some analogy like this, you would have a kid, you can either put him in some martial arts and become mm -hmm. very confident and very good productive in society, or he can go on the street and do exactly the same thing and go completely different way and end up in jail. Exactly. And if you have a kid, what is full of power, has so much energy, then of course, send him to football, send him to, to karate, send him to boxing, because he can expand his power there, but he learned rules. Yes. And with, with this combination, uh, the child learns to be part in the society with, with this energy. And bring something to it. And exactly the same is, is, is with, the, with the working dogs, with the, the Rottweiler, the Doberman, uh, the German Shepherd, the Malinois, the Erdel Terrier. It's, it's a perfect, the perfect thing for these dogs. I think this is where um, we need to all all of us we need to continue to keep talking to everybody and and educating and not not really going into confrontation and fights with people but really explaining why this is okay and not just okay but why this is important uh Ivan, it's a little bit like in in the uh in our community yeah you have to learn to to accept the thinking of other people. Yes, you, you really and and some people have the gift for that. I had to learn it. I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, I know what you're saying. It's like, no, I don't know what you're saying. I need to shut up and listen sometimes, you know, because it, that's it's so important to be able to listen to each other. It's so important. For, for me, it's exactly the same. Um, ten years ago, uh, uh, more than ten years ago, uh, after working dog getting more and more successful, um, I, I started to make a copy of it for the horses. Mm. And, um, it was in, in 2010. And I realized uh, that the, the community of the horse sportsmen and the breeders is um, very similar, but on another level, of right. course. And um, I got in joint venture with a big, big company um, for newspapers in Germany. And they come to me and I said, um, okay, uh, we, we have news, we have four newspapers or four magazines for, for the horse sports and they are dying. And you started with this nice idea. And one of our manager of the board, he's uh, a dog's man and he know your website working dog. And he tells us when, uh, this guy makes the same for horses it will be so um popular also and so we we want we want make a joint venture with you and um i did it they spent millions of euro in our joint venture yeah yeah and it was uh, such a crazy time because at, at this time my, my company has about 30 people so my, my own company in Halle has about 30 people and I built up this new company for a company for horses uh, with them um, on a completely different place in Germany and it was um, three days working in my company three days working in this company driving with car every every week I 
grow up this new company for horses uh, to to 10 people and uh, i bring this website to the market and it was so much stress and the biggest thing was that um we are under the roof of this big magazine house mm -hmm. over a thousand people are working in this and there you have like in in yeah like in big company it's uh structure like yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah 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 Every whoever worked in company like this know um, you spend 70% of your energy every day into the work and 30% you must spend into politicians, <laughs> into politics. Yeah. And for me, it was so hard at the beginning because I was always my, my own boss. Right. And you have some idea, but then you have to run that idea by everybody and they have to agree exactly. and exactly why to why to discuss about it because this idea is brilliant yes. i want to keep it running <laughs> and um one of my my teacher there uh, in this time very well experienced uh, a businessman he said to me oh my god matthias you are like a bulldozer in the in the in the in the wood <laughs> And in this time, I, I, I learned to step back, listen, not always agree for sure. But um, this is, I think this is a very, very important thing for our community. Oh, it's a quality that it's a very difficult, but it's a very important one. And I, you know how I said in the beginning, like you're really good at the, the like you, like the business you see things and and to do that you have to be able to listen because otherwise it's not like you will you will miss opportunities you will miss you know like it, it's just not yeah it's not a smart thing so so the so where is the horse uh, uh where where is that standing today it's the world's most uh, successful website for <laughs> for horses cheers to you man yeah uh but uh i decided uh in 2013 2014 um to sell my my options on this company mm -hmm. uh, today i'm not sure if i did it again like this but in in, in the situation for me uh this was only a business yeah, you know, I, I I like horses, but I don't love them, and so it was like, uh, okay, the situation is good, and I decided um, to sell my options. Yeah. I'm still I'm still something like a, a service company for them. We help in development and administration, uh, but it belongs today completely to this uh, mm -hmm. big media house, and um, yeah. It's history. And it's a worldwide. Yeah. Uh, this times helps me also to 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 have new ideas for, for our dog sport community. It it's always good to 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 look at the whole sport because they are much more professional. Mm -hmm. And um yes. at the end they at the end, they have the same problems like we. Exactly the same problems. They have the people out there fighting against uh, the, the horse trainers. And uh, it's completely the same. But for, for them, um, a lot of things are much more easier because in the government you have uh, some horse people, but you don't have some IGP dog sport people yes. for sure. Yes, <laughs> yes, that's the difference. And and whenever they, it's just they they have a little, not a little. They have much more opportunities as far as money to where they can, if if they really have to, they can get lobbies. They can get 
attorneys. They can, uh, you know, high end to where they can defend their uh, uh, rights to, to work with horses for sure. At least in the dog world, forget about horses and dog people to unify, but in the dog world, we can, we can have different interests. We can have different clubs. We can, you know, this is, this is normal human qualities. We, you know, sometimes we get along, sometimes we don't get along. Sometimes we need to step away and do something else, but there is a bigger picture and there is a, a really bigger enemy towards all dog training. And in that sense, we have to find a way to, to work together against that. And that's not easy. Yeah. That's not easy. Yeah. You know, when we were talking like how, where is a Caniva stay in everything? Like I always kind of curious about how Caniva comes in. Caniva was the idea, uh, idea to um, create a platform to organize um, events like exams, competitions, seminars, and all this. And um, it starts with uh, you. You can you can make advertisement for your competition when you put it inside. Um, people can make registration there very easy. Yes, yes, all the forms. Yeah, very true. We use it. We use it. You know, and uh, I, 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 I always, I always struggling with this, uh, competitions when they don't use Caniva, and I must fill out some paperwork and write in uh, uh, the chip number of my dog. It's it's a hassle. I, I hate it really. And with the Caniva system, it's so easy. And at the end, um, you promote your competition because when i make registration with my dog and i'm on the uh, competitor list of this competition you can see it on working dog yeah you can see this dog will participate on this competition this dog handler will participate on this competition and this brings also advertisement to the competition yeah and for sure at the end um you have a payment system in Caniva. That means um, I remember in, in past it's it's a big thing. For example, in in agility, in agility, uh, it's it's not a special thing if you have an exam with with 100 dogs or with 100 starts. It's normal there, and um, with Caniva you can make the payment for the starting fee completely electronical, and you don't have to collect it manually from the people. Yeah, no, it's a, it's a super cool. Like I, I remember when it first came, it was a little confusing. Like, well, what do we do with that? Mm -hmm. But then once you, once you use it, it's like, okay, yeah. yeah, this is totally makes sense. It simplifies things and it's worth it. What about your, uh, like, I, I, I'm always interested in, in like, all the laws and the legislations and is there anything new that you know of coming up in Europe that they're trying to to do against dog sports or 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 nothing at the moment because you know how in the first of January they there was a big problem with the the police and the electric colors and yes. what is next this is the big question and um, at the moment, at the moment, um, nobody knows what is next because nobody has the connection to the important points in the government. Mm -hmm. And um, I am sure that uh, there will be something and only only the naive and stupid people think uh, now it's finished it's, it's not right. it's not there are there are people in the background fighting so hard for the next big thing maybe private people are not more allowed to make protection trade yeah something like this i i don't know 
And um, this is this is uh, the point where I'm I'm real afraid about that that we don't know it, and that our uh, infrastructure and our our um, clubs don't have access at the moment. Yeah, it's very true because it seems like it always comes as a surprise at the very last moment where everything is pretty much decided okay. and you have no chance to to make a case against that anymore. Evan, you, you know how it works. People um, what uh, who are uh, active in political, um, maybe we make it very simple, for example. You are living in a, in, a, in a village, and in this village, you have uh, the, the, the governor, uh, and you have uh, people are active in this village, who are responsible for um, the streets, ideas about what to do for the kindergarten, oh, our school needs something new, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. All this, what is necessary to keep the system on running. And these people are active in politics. They go there one time a month, they discuss, they decide, they vote. And at the end, you see the result. If you are only living in this village without any connection into this group where the decisions are made, you will ever uh, always be surprised about the new things. Yeah. But these people, they know about it since three years because decision in politics take so long. And at the moment, we have nobody who goes there. This is what we need. In the yes. past, we have it. In the past, the right people from the weedy age sitting in the government going to this to this conferences and make discussion. These people today don't do it. These people today say what they did and they don't even ask us. Can you imagine? Yes, I can imagine. Move your ass. Yes. It's your job. Make lobby work for, for our sport. You got paid for this. These people don't come and ask you. You must go there and work for it. So how, how can we change it? How can we, how can we convince the people that are on the board of any working commission or, or whatever we want to call them, these three, four, five, six people in different organization that they need to actually become proactive and defend us because that's why they are really, this is why they are there. It's not possible. That's disappointing, but not surprising, unfortunately, <laughs> right? Um, okay, it's I, I, I can't I can't go in details, but exactly what we are talking right now <laughs> takes so much brain work for me in the last years to understand how we can fix it. And at the end, we must accept that it's not possible to, to reactivate in this infrastructure, in our clubs, this kind of making lobby work. Mm. It's, it's because of, of this infrastructure in this. Um, yeah, yeah, that's how the machine moves right now yes yes so i have i have a solution for this since last year i'm working with a small group on this since last year uh, we met every month and uh, speak about the next steps and it's completely out of any um, official things. It's completely 
hide it until now and over the next months for sure. And there, there will be a day. Uh, it will not be tomorrow or uh, in two days that we come to public. And when we come to pub public, everything will be perfect to make this happen and solve this problem we had right now. Wow. That's it's a little bit. I, I know no. it's now a shit situation. No, 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 no. That's exciting. That yeah. You won't hear more. <clears throat> but um, definitely the, don't give anything away. It's just it's just very comforting to know that you know somebody's trying somebody's working on it and maybe there is other people working on something similar and and even though we are not working together you know but we for have to we to have me, to for me it's 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 always nice to see when 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 people out there try something new and try to do something for the sport for the community i respect this and I'm, I'm totally happy that that more people want to do something and I, I don't I don't go out and say uh, this will not be um, they will not be successful with it I don't do it because I, I can't know yeah we need to try so much ways and at the end nine of ten will don't work and one will work and we need 10 people doing 10 different ways yes <laughs> to have this and maybe my idea also don't work i i don't know it right now i believe in it and i'm thinking that the, the basic of my idea is um going out of the bubble It, it don't make sense um, to get stronger inside the bubble. We must go out of the bubble. Yes. And there was a really, a really nice situation at the Tzatzit. I must speak about it because it's a good example for every organizer. They must listen exactly to this right now. In every, in every competition or in every big championship in Germany, it is totally normal that you ask for local politicians. In, in most, in, in the most situation, it's uh, the local um, governor. My of, mayor, uh, yeah. Yep. Major, yes, of, yep. the, of the town. And uh, it's always the same. They come at the beginning and they come at the end. Our guy comes in the middle on Saturday when the stadium was full and at one o'clock after lunch, it was the big, greatest atmosphere in the stadium. It was not the end ceremony where the most people are going. Nobody home. paying attention yes. anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very it's, smart. It was in the middle. And then he, he goes around and he was looking and he was saying, my God, I never see this tribune, so much people here in my uh, in my town. Wonderful. And these dogs, look what they do. Please explain me. He don't know nothing about our sport. And then um, we explained. And then Dirk Edler, the judge of the, camp, uh, of the protection, he said to me, Give him a slot right now. Dirk, what do you mean? Give him the microphone. He, we, we make a short break for two minutes. He go on the field and he should say hello to the people. And we were thinking, what? Okay, we, we, we make short pause. He got the microphone. He goes on the field. And he said, hey, dogs, people. It's, it's very so, organic, very natural, and at, at the yeah. right time, yes. And, and then, and then he said, um, "It's so nice to see you here. It's so beautiful this competition, and I hope you come again next year." 
and the, the whole stadium was oh and this guy he make oh look they like me i'm famous yes. so yes. this is important for politicians uh, that's for sure. very true and after the after the competition he, uh, we talk and he said uh, how can i support you next year wow, what can wow, i do wow. <laughs> and this is this is such a small thing yes and it's very again it's at the right time with the right idea and it's not like it's not like he had to prepare some fake speech on paper and it's like no no oh. i'm talking to you people and yes. i'm getting it back the same way uh, and ivan ivan you, you you know you know it uh every time at the ceremony or oh, it takes so long and then the local politician come and blah 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 these are the thing yeah this is very smart and hopefully yeah people that listen around the the, the world uh, you know it's it's a smart way to to inter that that interaction is very natural at the right moment between the government and and the dog people beautiful and now you have you now you have a politician guy who's well connected in this area and he knows about the sport and imagine next time there will be discussion about new laws about new what to change against us you can go to him you can say hey can you help us and for sure he will because he know that these are serious people that it is nice nice atmosphere nice sports fair to the animal and this we need no this is this is what we really need and it's uh it's m- so much better than going to his office and trying to convince him of something it, it doesn't work that way it never works that way this is how a lobby lobby work uh, uh must go on we must speak about our sport we must go out of the bubble showing showing the people outside they never heard about our sport what it means making igp sport and we we have you know it we have a marketing problem about what we're talking igp ipo vielseitigkeit schutzhund what is this why what yeah the, let tell me why the, why the people did this in the last 20 years why it's exactly like when I changed the name of working dog every five years. It don't make sense. <laughs> no, this is this is mind blowing. I mean, how many times we've changed this? For no reason. For yes. for actually, of course, there are reasons if you ask them, but it's the wrong reasons. Yeah. It's just trying to play along and submit to instead of saying, hey, no, this is what we do. This is not bad. We don't need yeah. to change. We don't need to pretend that it's something. And it's uh, just as you said, how many times if you change anything, like I change my kennel name to something else, you change working. Do- I mean, you don't have identity. You're nobody forever. Yes you know how hard it is to build up a brand it's it's so much work and it's so much money to build up a brand and when you have this brand you must you must you must save it you must keep it you must praise it and yeah. honestly right now i'm trying to even think what igp stands for yes exactly. i mean i mean Gosh, exactly. Like, come on, people. Enough politics. I think we. This is. This was been very cool stuff. Tell me. Tell me. On on personal, like, what is the kind of dog? Like, what kind of dog you like to to train? Like, what is your type of dog? When you see some dog and you're like, okay, that's my kind of dog. In the past, um, in the past, normally I was always um 
started competing with a female. Mm, it was for me, um, yeah, this Holle from Holzhäuser Fluor, that was my, my first biggest success where I make the second place on the World Championship uh, um, 2013. Yeah. Josef, Josef Adamushkin, he made the first. Uh, we have the same points and uh, he had the better protection. Um, then after after Holle, I have uh, my working dog, Bredana. I was uh, one time VDH champion in 2017, competed uh, so often with her on, on world championships. And um, yeah, now it's it's a male. It's Ash. Ash. Yeah, and um, how old is he? This, yeah, he is now seven. Okay. And it's it was really a, a pity because he was finished when he was uh, two and a half. So he, I was so fast with him. And then I have my first uh, national competition, and I make. Uh, he was even not three years i make first place with amazing points and i was thinking with with this dog with this dog i i will reach my goal and maybe i can make something like a yeah. world champion yeah this was my hope in, in this time and uh, then you know what happened corona comes <laughs> corona comes and this fucked me up so hard because uh, when Corona was over, he was uh, almost five, yeah. and I, I I really did nothing in these two years. I, I was really lazy uh, in in dog sport. I okay, we have training, but you you have no target. Right, right. For what to train? So it in this time I I spend much more time in breeding and. Uh, when uh, Corona was finished, uh, I have uh, exactly two years after my first competition, the successful competition with him, I had um, the first one again, and I have excellent in um, tracking and I have excellent in obedience. And it was like, I'm doing it again. And then in the protection, he comes through the blind and make Palm. <laughs> and everybody yeah. said, oh, and I don't hear him bark him and I know, okay, something gone, gone up wrong. And what was happened? Mm, at this time, really a, a, a lot of people um, trained with me. A lot of people who has dog dogs from my, from my kennel. And um, the last training, it was uh, two or three days before, and I was uh, making helper work for everybody. And at one o'clock in the night, when we was finished, I take my dog out for, out for protection. So mm. totally right. stupid. Right. Total, totally stupid. But I don't think about, the other people don't think about, and um, then I make real uh, a bad thing it was a, a mistake from me it was not a mistake from the dog and he has a wrong combination in his head because i, I work at the blinds for for making the the, the short ways yeah. uh, with the ball in the blind and uh, then we put the the ball on the other side in the blind and we don't recognize that the ball is on the wrong side and every blind he come without the ball out. And I was so angry of him. And I said, what are you What's doing? Going Take on? the yeah, ball. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's a must. No? He don't want this shit ball. He must do it um, to go to the helper. So um, he come every time without the ball. And uh, I was so angry and I, I, I make... I, uh, I make force to him and I said, uh, come on, come on, do it. And this make disturbs him in this, in this situation. He don't understand it for sure. It was my mistake. Right. And then I checked, I checked, oh shit. Somebody put the ball on the wrong side. So exactly on this side, he don't look. Huh? Right, right. 
Oof. And this, this he takes to the to the competition, and he, he comes around, and he only said, "I must be right, so I." I'm take. taking something, yeah. But he don't take the ball; he take the helper. <laughs> and this was uh, that cost me so much points that I don't got the qualification on the German Championship. And I lose two years of Corona yeah. and now one year because this stupid shit. And um, then after this competition, um, all my people who trained with me make first, second, third and fifth place. Wow. And I was so down. I was so down because I didn't pass. And then my, my father come to me and said, um, hey, what's going on? And I explained him and I said, I'm so angry about my team. Why they don't help me in this situation? I was the last one. I do all the, the, the protection work with them. And then he said to me, stop with it. Why you are angry with your team? It's your fault. You are the leader of your team. You make bad organization. And now stop this mm. and be happy of your team because today they are successful. And I was like, yes, he's right. <laughs> <laughs> I switched my, my mood and my mind and um, then it was really a, a, a nice weekend. Oof, I But just got goosebumps like listening to this. This is a tough one, man. It was a hard exercise for me. You can't believe me. I've been there one time. I remember with it was uh, with Kenny. It was the year before I won the world championship. And I don't know. I don't know. Was it FCI or FMBB, but it was in Holland. Mm -hmm. And he do, didn't just bite. He, he actually beat so hard that he moved the whole blind and the helper and the blind fell down. Mm -hmm. So, and then he let go and then he started barking. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but that's the dog sport too, you know, that's kind of in a way why we, I think it's in a way why we do it and why we like it, because there is still that thing between you and the dog and the dog sometimes can just be the dog and say, fuck it, I'm, this is what I'm doing. I went exactly. And, and, and this is the point where you think, hey, I am a real professional. And then you come and your dog said, um, not today. Yep. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a dog. <laughs> <laughs> and it's good that we can laugh about it, but I know at the moment it's, it's just, it's a crash. It's like a, it's just a pop -pum. Yes. Yes. And it's, it's, it's always, it's always like, uh, Everybody has has his part where he is strong and everybody has his part where he's really good. And it changed from dog to dog. So for me, uh, I do it like you so many years. I'm, I'm always, I'm always afraid uh, about the track. So I, my, my, my last four or five uh, tracks were always excellent. I make four times 100 um, in, in exams with, with Ash. But again, when I go to the tracking field in the exam, I'm still nervous. Yes. I can't stop it because... Because you're walking behind, watching. <laughs> yeah, and, and in track, there are always so much things you uh, that can be out of your control yes yes so which is your favorite like if you have a 
I mean, I, you're right. It depends on dog to dog. Like I know, like right now, I have a young one that's not even two years old. He is a genetic freak when it comes to tracking. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, I mean, I, I was busy trying to prepare for FMBB until um, uh, uh, my dog had the injury and, and we got out. So I'm like, okay, well, he's, I can put him to wait a little bit. So maybe four months, I haven't done nothing. I take him out and I do a track and it's not even any tracking food. I mean, just randomly, like I could care, just like, okay, let's do something with him. And it's so different when the dog has this talent and and it's like, you know, some dogs are tracking, yes. they are on the track and some yes. dogs are in the track, like with their mind, they're like, and I, I don't know, I'm sure there will be some difficulties and and I still will stress about tracking because of that as we're talking it's out of control but I know that uh it's a it's a such a good feeling to know that the dog has this natural talent for it um but like if you if you take on equal basis any dog what is your favorite part of the sport Mm, it's a protection. Protection. Yeah, it's a protection. Because it's the and real it's, character of, of, okay, who are you, right? Yeah, yeah, and um, for sure, because I'm, I'm, I'm also a helper. I, I love helper work, and um, for me, uh, I, I like dogs who are. Um, so strong in, in protection. Uh, for me, for me, it's okay mm, when when the dog is, is is not so good in obedience. Then then for me, I, I can yes, I can agree with it. Um, I uh, learn him the basics, and um, for me, it's okay if he's not the fastest, not or flashy, not, uh, right? Yeah. Yes, yes, it's okay. But in protection. I want to see grip and I want to see speed and I want to see a dog who do something on the help. And um, this is this is also what I breed. Um, most of my dogs are in, in this really, really good. They have some problems in obedience. Some people are sell, uh, telling me uh, could be more drive for this, but they work. They, they work in another way. They are like, um, yeah, yeah. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, um, it's it's hard for me to explain in English. For <laughs> no, no, <laughs> right I know now. what you mean. It's a, it's a more of a like like the classic, you know, Belgian ring kind of more primitive dog with natural abilities of like, okay, this is, this is protection. This is important. This is who I am. And then yes, they will do obedience for you, but they don't see the, it's not a border calling mentality, right? It's not the, oh, let's do this. Yes. And uh, Bredena, for example, was um, exactly uh, this, this kind of dog. Um, Bredena, my, my B litter, my second litter. Um, I, I take her from uh, from this um, from all these puppies because she was for me uh, most impressive as a young dog or as a puppy. Where I think, okay, this will be really nice working dog, and then I um, start training with her and um, in protection from the first day it was so easy to make really something great with her she was uh it was powerful yeah yeah yeah. but in obedience in obedience i was dying i was dying 
she was nine months old or 10 months old and i was not able to teach her the healing she was not interested in food she was not really interested in the ball it was like okay yes and i was thinking about myself that i'm not able to teach a doctor the healing and um, it was i remember in 2014 i was at the um, championship in finland i don't know was it uh, the fmbb i think so huh? yeah 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 and uh, uh, there i was with with, with my holle and uh, i i met there um karl heinz knies mm -hmm. um he was competing there and uh I know him for sure before, well-known dog handler since years here in Germany. And um, I speak with him and I said, um, hey, you are the guy with this with this touch, uh, this thing you make beep, yes. beep, beep, beep. Yes. Um, I, I, have a, I have a young dog and she's uh, really nice, uh, but um, in protection, but in obedience, I'm, I'm, I'm dying. I guess I and should explain to everybody that listens. Uh, I mean, Karl Heinz, he had a, uh, it's, it's basically like a very smart way of training the dog with a, like a target to where it places it. And then the dog kind of makes the attention, but it puts a very, very clear picture of what to do. Exactly. Yes. So you have the target on your side and every time the, the dog uh, hits the target, it makes it marks a, a it. sound. Yeah. And of course, uh, you give reward for the sound. And it's very clear because it, it al also works with frustration. Um, if the dog makes sound, beep, beep, and you don't give reward, he gets frustrated and make more, more, more. Yes, exactly. And uh, then we starting to train together in uh, 2015, 2016. And Karl Heinz, he was, um, I, I always say he was my my last big mentor. Mm -hmm. And um, I make protection for his dog and he helped me to getting into the next level. And um, I said to him, look at this dog. Um, we make now obedience. Um, yeah, and he was looking and he was said, Ah, oh, Matthias, uh, you competing on world championship. I'm not sure if this dog is enough for you because she don't want make healing, not enough drive. Why you keep her? I, say, I said to him, um, yeah, wait, we make now protection. And after protection, he said to me, okay, I understand. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> so and, and then he said okay uh, it makes sense to spend time to try <laughs> yes <laughs> yes and uh, one and a half year later like uh, or two years later i got german champion and uh with with this dog now now comes the story with this dog on every competition i got an excellent in healing wow yeah it it was the most worst exercise for her. It was the hardest to train, and at the end, on every competition, I make excellent in, in this in the heel work. So, and this is this is the kind of dog um, I, I like. For me, it's okay when I, I I must spend more energy from my side into the into the uh, obedience. But in the protection, I want natural. the real one. Yeah, <laughs> the yeah. natural yeah. one. Yeah. Does is a uh, Karl Heinz? Is he doing anything now, or or? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He he, he want to compete at the Zatzit competition, but his dog uh, gets sick two weeks before, and uh, he called me and said, oh, "Shit!" And I'm trying to fix it, but it was. He was not um, fit enough, and so he decided, don't compete. He was there the, the whole weekend, and um, we called uh, this afternoon, and uh, he said to me, 
uh, Matthias, uh, for sure next year I want to compete. I heard from everybody that everybody wants to compete, so you must save for me a place. Awesome. Wow. And <laughs> speaking of which, how does it... That's a, that's a good question about the Sasset. Like, you, you have to limit it at some point to certain number, or, or how is it going to work? So Bart said to me uh, two days ago, Matthias, you must find a way that 300 people can compete. <laughs> I said, Bart, it's not possible no. because we need tracking. And he, and he said, yes, you stupid uh, IGP people, stop it with tracking. You don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, This is a good question, Ivan, and uh, I, I'm honest. Uh, I, I don't have an answer yet for it. I, I know, I know. So many people won't compete next year. Uh, the Tsarzit competition in Czech Republic. Uh, they they grow up to 70 starters, and it was booked booked out in 20 hours, something like this. Wow. And um, I'm, I'm not sure we make one day more that we can uh, have 100 competitors next year, but I'm sure um, there are much, much more who won't go there. It and, also um, starts to be very difficult on, on the judges, you know, for so many days to, to stay focused. Like I know, I mean, I, I also am a, a judge and I know myself, like I there is no way I... I can judge to a certain point, but my brain checks out. Like it just, yeah. I, I would not be able to. So protection is your thing. It makes sense. It makes sense because it's a, I mean, when you think about it, IGP ultimately, yes, it's three phases. Yes, it's, it's but protection is the, the, the essence of it um yes. it really yes. is that's the point and and this is um think now uh three hours back when you ask me how how did it start mm. um, yes for, for, for me it starts at the moment i take the sleeve on and make protection with a nine year old year old uh, German Shepherd the first time and I remember it like it was one hour ago when I, 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 I take the sleeve here and I don't see the dog when he's coming here it was, it your was heart skipping a bit a, yes it was such here look <laughs> I <laughs> this is the emotion I, I i feel about it yeah and this is this is my life and and now you now you know why i want protected right i can't i can't imagine doing igp sport without the part of protection i can't imagine it's then it's for me not my sport anymore right so and or or the very wash down type of protection that you don't really it's not protection anymore it's playing frisbee it's just it's just going through the behaviors without the emotion and the, the showing character anymore very true how soon do you start like do you have any what is your typical like i know with me i i I'm just so, I, I'm very, I don't have structure with my training at all. People sometimes think that I am, because I train in professional and whatever, that there is always, but I'm, I'm freestyling big time. Like if sometimes I could start a puppy at four weeks, I mean, four months or eight weeks or a year old. And like, what, what, where are you with this? Like, as far as training, how, how, how often, and how soon do you start them? I'm very lazy at the beginning. And um, this always kills me when I see on YouTube or Facebook other people showing um, 
what the dogs do with eight months, then I I get really in depression. Yes, <laughs> the, the YouTube I, champions. Yes, and, and I'm, I'm thinking in this situation, oh man, Matthias, um, raise your ass up, go out to the kennel, take out the dog and do something. No, you must. <laughs> I'm, I'm really at the beginning. I'm I'm so lazy. Um, okay, I do the basics: sits, platz, steh, with food and uh, with food. Yeah, uh, but it's really, yeah, not in 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 this way. A lot of other people do. Um, but at the end, there comes a point. Mm, I think it's when when the dog getting about one and a half year then for me it it, it switched and then I, I start to be doing a lot mm -hmm. and um, then I'm always um, wondering where all these dogs are I saw one year ago in YouTube or on Facebook yep yeah and maybe maybe I, I have no result in my head about this maybe it's it's i don't know maybe it's not good to do so much when the dog is young um i, I can't i i have no idea about it I, i can't explain but i see very very often Good, good exercises, good training from from unknown people with young dogs. Uh, they make a perfect, perfect dumbbell work even with six months. I was thinking like, oh my god, wow. my right. my dog even never see a, a dumbbell in his life, and he's one year. I think about this sometimes too, and um, and I ask everybody that you know. When I talk, What's to, your idea about it? talk to Mia and Yanni and, you know, they were here for a month. We trained together and it was cool. My, I don't know, like I, you know how, well, way back when I started, it was very important not to start young because Trainers at that time were just very true, too hard. It was very different style of training and you cannot do this kind of shit to five month old puppy. And and then things change. Then we change a little bit of training and we were like, okay, well, puppies are still, it's not that they don't have brains, they still can do things and we know. And it just as you say, you can have a six month old puppy that can do a lot of things. If we do it intelligently, I think, I think there are benefits, but even when you look at how, how we said, like, yeah, it's a YouTube champion, but then what happens when, when he should be three years old? Where is that dog again? And I think happens a lot with kids too. Like the parents decide, no, you will play tennis five times a week. And at the moment the kid is old enough to say, you know, I used to like tennis, but I'm done with it. And there is that risk, you know, to burn a puppy by doing so much and demanding so much for a, a brain that's not ready. And so I kind of go, I think similarly to you, I find that, and, and I have to be careful how I say this because I do, I definitely do things with puppies, but in all reality, where I am today with my training, I realized that I can accomplish so much more when the dog is older, even if I start from scratch, simply because the dog is a little bit more mature and understands why we are doing what we are doing, if that makes sense, instead of being a puppy and okay, I'm doing these things, but I don't kind of know what I'm doing. So I, Yes, I do things with puppies just to keep their interest, but I'm very, very careful not to not to be so demanding to a puppy. And in fact, if if again 
kind of yeah being being lazy is a good word and sometimes i think it becomes with experience and age and and realizing that you're not missing that much and and i truly believe that you have a dog that's a little bit more mature and and that varies of course of the individual dog but you know being a year old or a 15 months old or even a 2 year old when i'm teaching him something totally new i think they put it more in a in the right context understanding and and it comes just as fast and you all of a sudden realize that oh i didn't really miss the bolt mm-hmm. and that's kind of you know i guess i <laughs> I mean you have different dogs too like some some there is puppies that are 5 months old or 6 months or 7 months old and and you know they're grown up they they actually see it mm-hmm. like they recognize oh oh you're looking at me kind of different i can show you who i am to where you have another puppy that is like okay i'm going to bark at you but i don't see you as a threat you know Mm-hmm. and i think we have to recognize that um i was um yeah as i said i mean uh yani bomb with his new dog a very very cool dog and he's so young and he has already i think he's going to get igp3 any day mm-hmm. i mean he's totally ready to do anything then Mia was here at the same time her dog is the same age and and she's like no no I I'm, I'm I have to take my time mm-hmm. and I think that's the beauty of our sport too to where we all feel different just like when you said with uh and uh, it depends on the dog exactly it depends, it depends on the dog for sure also on the dog handler but also for for the most part on the dog yes yeah it's just like you know when you listen to to Knut talking about Clem at that time he was 6 month old and he was like a, i'm ready yes my my yes. dog jango at that time you know was at 2000 or what he he was the youngest dog in competition he wasn't even 3 years old he was second at fmbb with one point difference between me and knut It, it's a uh, like we should and this is important for trainers that are starting not to not to judge oh look at him he's ready i should be there like you have to recognize who you are working is the dog ready and how much can you ask before you cross that line because once that line is crossed it's hard to bring the dog back i think and mm-hmm. and it's a very cool thing to to be able to recognize and sometimes take your time but then there is the other risk on the other side that okay well the dog is already 4 years old and you're still taking your time like really taking your time and then who knows what just like covid comes or something happens and you're thinking that you have that 2 year window of opportunity but then life hits you and yeah you have to start over it's a tricky game okay what 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 happen uh, always i i i see it every time you have a dog on competitions in different generations so at the moment when you're when you're looking at the dog from knut or my dog ash they are in the end of the career age yep. and there are some dogs now who are better in performance and technique but without this experience so at the moment um when 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 you look at ash um i i, tr- I started to train him 7 years ago right 7 years ago with my experience and with The, with the way to train before seven years and of course since in, in, in the seven years a lot changed 
And when I see at my um, youngest dog, uh, this Zirka from Holzhäuser Flur, um, she made now this, this litter with the 16 puppies. Wow. And uh, she she will be my next uh, dog for competition. Um, I make BH with her uh, at the end of last summer. And um, I, I started um, with her in, in IGP-1. And um, she's now, I think, not finished, but she will finish this summer in IGP-3. And then she gets in heat at the beginning of the year. And I decided, okay, I, may, I make a litter before I go with her on competition. Mm. So I did. The litter is now here and uh, the puppies are uh, going away in a uh, few weeks or a few days. And um, then I will compete or will go on with her in training and I will compete with her starting at the end of the year. And when I see her training, it's on, on a new level in different ways. So I, for sure, I, I did watched out so much on um, things I, I, I don't recognize um, six or seven years ago, yeah. like um, making the zits and directly the ears and like this and making the plats and directly the ears and making this. And I, I did it from the first beginning with her. Yes. And uh, for sure, she is now not perfect because she's young uh, and not finished. But in, in one or in two years, she will have the better technique than Ash right now. And this is what always happened in competition. The new people come the new generation come with a better technique but less experience and when they have a hard tracking then you are with your old dog on the, on yes. the better side yes. <laughs> the consistency <laughs> yeah yes yes yeah. it's better for you and uh this is easy then this young generation have the better chance and of course uh if you have a dog seven years eight years it's the end of the career and you see it also in the in the things you must do with the dog um, of course um, i prepare ash completely in another way for the competition uh, than i did it three years ago um it's it's not necessary to to explain him every yes. uh, something yes it's only it's only about he must be in good condition and he must be happy wanting to go <laughs> yes exactly he must be happy. let's That's go all. dad i'm ready it's like wait yes, wait yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah true this is the this is another cool part of the sport you know knowing learning how to manage the the young dog in competition versus the five-year-old versus the seven-year-old and 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 not do the same thing because it they don't want the same thing there's got to be something um that was my whole like i you know with eyes the same like i had the covid i had a bunch of family problems and it just it was a big struggle and he's seven and a half but he was in the the best place in his sport career for that FMBB and 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 the key to that was even though you know we like it's so hard when you have everybody around you with younger dogs and they're training every day and you're like no I don't need to train every day like I really shouldn't be training every day um, because you have to keep that spark, that flame of I want to uh, with the older dog, especially when things are, there is nothing to problem solve. Um, it's a, and this is where, you know, like when, again, like your dog, Knut's dog, all the older dogs, when they are able to perform, 
this is a long-term strategy of being able to maintain it. Going back to the the example that I was giving with the kids that are very talented to play tennis, but then the the parents just burn them out before they are 16 years old and they don't want to touch a racket anymore. Tracking is becoming more and more difficult to find places even in Germany now, no? Um, depends of the region. In, in East Germany... In East Germany, it's, you, it's brilliant. Like I, every time I go in there, I'm like, I, I need to take a two week vacation and, and just, oh. You have so much space for this here and uh and yeah, the farmers are not so they, they are okay right so we we have we have for the whole competition we have two fields wow that's all it, it's so huge here in in our area and um and the good thing it's it's the same for everybody Okay, for sure. One day you, it, it was a little bit more windy. Sometimes it, it rained. Okay, but the, the the field was the same, yeah. and that's good. That's important, I think. Yes, tracking is a. Uh, every once in a while, when I hear, well, we have to take tracking away. Like if we take tracking away, it it will change the sport again. Like the beauty of our sport is because of the three components that are so different. If you take away the tracking, the, the, the completely sport will change and it will not be the same. The question is, can the tracking be in another way? Like, like the KMPV area searches and stuff, right? For example. <clears throat> and, um, okay. We are international guys. You, you came around, you have contact to people all over the world. For me, it's the same. And, and I understand for, for a guy from, from China or for, for some young people living in urban cities, this is a big shit. Yeah. For me, I'm, 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 I'm here in, in my, in my house. Uh, I'm living in a village. I'm not living in a city. And when I go down one one uh, <laughs> one stair, then I can take my dog, and ten meters in front of my house, there's the first field. That's I, not, I can go that's for not fair. <laughs> <laughs> Here I have a field, and there I have a big green for for horses. I can uh, search on, on on grass. So for for me, it's easy. Yeah, but for a lot of people. Uh, it's not. Look at the look at the at the field at the tracking field at the FMBB right Romania, now. Yeah, this was crazy. And you know, you you can have you can have re a real good dog, but in in this point, it's a lot about luck. But I hope I I really hope the tracking stays because um, it's a, it's it just. It's important that protection stays, that challenges and tests a little bit the dog. And and tracking shows us such an important quality of a dog that can switch drives and, and show you natural talent. And you always recognize, just like in protection and in obedience, you recognize the natural talent or the training. And when you have the training and the natural tunnel, you're like, you know, as a judge, as a spectator, you, you're just enjoying. It, it gets you motivated to go back and train when you see it uh, in in that excellent form. Um, in Florida, very difficult with tracking. We yes, I believe we have to like right now. It's already above thirty degrees and. Like we went, it's it's, it's not easy. And uh, I, I remember when I was uh, in Italy at the World Championship, I uh, had with me a young female. Uh, I was competing there with Brodena, and with this young female, I I make some training during the competition, 
and I was on on, on uh, grass and I put my food there and something like 20 minutes later I go there and it was full of of big ants yes. and they are biting my dog so hard it makes me so much problems for the next weeks it was unbelievable yeah and then I, I realized um, how comfortable trekking in in East Germany is uh, and how yeah difficult in other countries but there is no way around it you know it just so what we do like right now summertime we're already planning that we're gonna get in the cars and go like for a week or 10 days somewhere and just mm -hmm. do tracking because um mm -hmm. it's not possible here mm -hmm. we it's just um we have our ants are not big they're small the cold fire ants and mm -hmm. man like you put the food and within within minutes less than five minutes and they are very like it's so bad and yeah. and we come up with different strategies how to deal with it but it's uh it can really dis discourage you from doing it i can imagine for sure tracking tracking is is a nice a nice exercise course um you're in a, in a completely different situation and the, the dog is in a completely different drive and it, it's so much about concentration and about harmony and it, it also takes some time for me when I when I started to learn that stress and tracking is, is so bad for the success right. and um, f for me tracking is is one of the part where you n really need a motivated dog <laughs> yes if the dog if the dog is not willing to do it if, if the dog don't have um, pleasure to do it Forget it. It will become it. Un, it will not be pleasant experience for the dog and for the trainer at that point. It just it becomes frustrating, and and uh, but mm -hmm. there is the beauty of you know going in the open field and you and your dog and this peaceful like like almost like a meditation. Like you know, it's really just there is something about tracking. Absolutely. I remember some years ago, I, I I was always good in trekking, but I but I don't feel like an expert. And um, so my my last big experience in in getting the next level was some years ago with a guy here in Germany. His name is uh, Sascha Angelmeier. Um, a lot of people know him that he's uh, he making some trekking seminars and this and for me he's one of the best in this and um, his his way of trekking I, I, I really like and he teach me um, a lot in the past so he brings me on the next level something like this and um, there was some some very interesting moments the first was that um, you use your leash and uh, you communicate all the time with your dog, but not in the way like uh, the judge uh, can take your points yeah. or like this. Yeah. It's, it's on another level. And um, this this helps me to, to understand that it's not only going behind your dog, it's like... Um, bring your dog in the right keeping him the correct mindset yes yes yes, yes, yes. and um, this was very helpful for me and and the second um, I, I was loving this uh, these days because uh, another 
well, very um, experienced trainer. Um, I think he's one of the most well-known trainer in the world. Um, he was writing on his Facebook profile something like, um, yeah, and the next video I present you is about um, how to handle um, problems with the corners. <clears throat> so it was about when the dog miss a corner, um, teach him how to handle this. And when I when I read it, I, I must really laugh about it because years ago, my one of my first question to uh, Sasha was, hey, Sasha, when my dog uh, missed the corner, what can I do? How to handle it? How can I learn to 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 solve this problem? And he's, he don't understand the question. And then I explain it again. And then he said, um, why, why you want learn how to fix a problem? Learn your dog that the problem don't exist. And I was, eh? yeah, makes sense. <laughs> right. So, so he he teached me he teached me um, that your that your dog don't goes um, over the corner and when he goes over the corner, then it was your mistake. And today it's exactly like this. It, it don't happen to me. And when it happened, one of I don't know fifty times or trackings like this. Right. Then then I realized okay it was my fault. Because I was not in concentration, and so the dog was not in concentration. This is a really interesting thinking. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe he is also uh, one interesting guy for your podcast. Yeah, I, I can definitely. Does he, how, can he speak English? Yes, I, Perfect. he can. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I haven't had anybody actually talking about tracking and tracking is something that is very interesting. It really is very interesting. Yeah, you have some some famous people here in Germany for this. Uh, Bernd Föri also yeah. very popular in, in tracking. He make a, a great job and um, teach people so much about tracking. Man, I think we we close it we've been talking for well <laughs> so long huh? very long very long but super mm -hmm. conversation super conversation so um I, i'm again like congratulations on that sitting and and definitely stay on top of that and keep it going because it's a big it, there, there is something into it and and it's going to be important and uh um what is the next competition what do you have next for you the next with the german no no it's wrong uh the next will be the Zadzit competition in poland when is it in june oh okay so it's not that far no it's it's not and after after this um i go to the german championship okay and um maybe Maybe I have luck and make my qualification to the FCI yeah. World Championship. Where is FCI? This, do you know? Um, um, uh, Hungary, I think. Huh? I don't know no, why. No, 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 no. It's it's Slovenia. That's right. That's right. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They. I don't know who I was talking where, um, to. Where it was uh, some years ago. Yeah, Nova Gorica, but the tracking, yeah, but the exactly. tracking they're gonna have in a different area, not up in the mountains. But uh, from what I know, the tracking is gonna be like in a bunch of different airports down somewhere. So, so the the VOSV World Championship will be in in Hungary and mm -hmm. FCI in Slovenia. No. Yeah, we will see. Well, I wish you best of luck. It's, uh, you know, it's it's important. This year is like a, there is a lot of competitions and, and you're, you're 
on the roll. So uh, best of luck and um, thanks a lot. I'll see you. I don't know when it's gonna be. Maybe maybe it is this year. But um, thank you, thank you for for the conversation, my friend. It's awesome. Yes, you you're making a good job with with this uh, interviews, and uh, it's it's also I think an important part of. Um, communication and, and uh, marketing for the sport. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, it's it's, it's important. Really nice, like from, really nice. I think I think we all as collectively are starting to become more aware that it's important that to do something about in in many different angles and I guess that's what I do. I don't get, you know, it's not like a sponsorships or advertisement. It's just I, I do it mainly because I like to talk to people I like to talk to. And and um, yeah, it's interesting for everybody. So I'll keep going. Um, but OK, Matthias, thank you. Thank you very much. All right. So Best I go now luck. sleep. <laughs> yes, bye bye. I know. Yeah. Take care, my friend.